The former soldier who hails from Kent. Scottish fans will remember him well, having floored previously unbeaten John Wilson five times on the way to a fourth round stoppage earlier this year. He's 24 and has twice come up short in attempts at the southern area middleweight crowd. Willie Quinn's been so close to the Lonsdale belt once before. Neville Brown stopping the Scots in the fourth last January. Now the 25-year-old is up at super middleweight and he's competing for a crack at rising star Dean Francis. Willie would then be bidding for the world title if he could climb that hurdle. From just four miles down the road in Trinette, the mighty Quinn is very much on home soil. It's big fight time. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Promoted by Frank Warren for Sports Network Europe and Alex Morrison. And sponsored by J.A. Buckley Technical Services and John Walker Painting Contractors. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a contest of ten three-minute rounds, an official eliminating contest for the Super Middleweight Championship of Great Britain. Between introducing the boxers, firstly coming out of the red corner, originally from Margate in Kent, now fighting out of Bristol. His professional record of 12 contests, he has eight wins, four losses, and weighed in at 11 stone, 13 pound, 10 ounces. Please welcome to Scotland, Sven Hamer. And across the ring, ladies and gentlemen, in the blue corner, wearing the white trunks, trimmed with green, coming from Tranent, from 24 professional contests, he has 22 wins, two losses, and he weighed in an 11 stone, 13 pound, 14 ounces. Ladies and gentlemen, your very own uh, Willie the Mighty! Your officials appointed for this contest by the British Boxing Board of Control, the steward in charge, Sir Andrew Sloan, chairman of the Scottish Council of the British Boxing Board of Control, the timekeeper, Mr. Jim Russell from Glasgow, the referee, Mr. John Keane from Northampton. Ten rounds then, eliminator for the British super middleweight title, Willie Quinn from just three miles down the road from where we are in Musselburgh, hails from Trenant, up against Sven Hamer, the Hammer, who is fresh from a hugely upset win over John Wilson, came in at just two days notice against the unbeaten Wilson and had him down five times en route for a massive upset stoppage win. But he's got a tall order here. Quinn's backyard. Huge support, if you can hear. 
English referee, John Keane. Quinn and the familiar trunks, white with a green trim. Hamer in the purple. know that Quinn so nearly bought off an upset of his own and he fought Neville Brown for the middleweight title and weight division below and Brown on the canvas maybe an experienced costume Brown coming back to stop him oh that wasn't supposed to happen was it round one right hand of Quinn down mandatory eight well now Hamer is a puncher. Quinn is down, and he's in all sorts of trouble now. Another mandatory eight. This is what Hamer did to Wilson. Plenty of time for Hamer. This is a huge upset in the making. Quinn all over the place. And Hamer can win this inside a round. Quinn out on his feet. John Keane having a very close look at him. Nothing coming back from Quinn. Bemused, bewildered, and stopped in round one. I tell you, that is one of the biggest upsets you will see in a British boxing ring in 1997. A one-round stoppage for Sven Hamer against local boy Willie Quinn. The crowd is stunned. They cannot believe it. But we've seen it with our own eyes, Gary. Yeah, I mean, I was, uh, was going to say, this is actually a, dear, a dangerous opponent. Sven Hamer was a... Willie Quinn was in contention. It was, a, it was a, an eliminator for the, the title. Here we see here, it was a cracking right hand. It was a good barrage of punches. Hamer was on a roll. He was on a win. He was back up here. He beat Wilson. He knocked Wilson. Here we go again. Good barrage, uppercuts on a real roll. So you've got to beat the man's confidence. He came up here with confidence to, to to fight Wilson. He knocked him out, he stopped him, and he's just done the same again to Billy the Mighty Quinn. You can all say that he got caught, he got caught cold, but that's what happens in boxing. Hamer was a dangerous opponent. He's came up and he's done the job and he's done it well. Well, just 24 years old is Hamer, a year younger than Willie Quinn. We'll talk to him in a moment. But boy, what a surprise. The crowd already filing out. They can't believe it. There we go. It was a good finish. Hamer was a very good finish, a solid performer. He caught Quinn, had him down, didn't let him off the hook. He had him down three times. I think he was down twice for two counts, and then the referee stepped in quite rightly so in the third attempt. Yeah, John Keane gave him every opportunity, but there was nothing coming back from Quinn. That was a good stoppage from the English referee. Yeah. Right, well, we'll get the uh, official verdict now from Mike Goodall. Ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes, 24 seconds of the first round, the referee stops the contest, and Willie Quinn is no position to defend himself. The winner, Sven Hamer. Generous applause from the Quinn camp. There's Hamer's second, Chris Sanagar, himself a cracking welterweight a few years ago. But Willie Quinn, I guess, big question mark over his career now, Gary. Yeah, he's going to go back and answer, ask some questions to himself uh, to find out what You can get caught cold, it can happen in boxing. I mean, it was the first round, but he came out, he came out compact. I thought he came out the right way, defending, defending well, hands held high, good guard. But he got caught, and now he has to go back, go back to the drawing board and ask questions. Where does he go from here? That was an eliminator for the British title. He's already fought for it once. So he's got to go and ask some serious questions. Well, Sven, you've just broken Scottish hearts. You've knocked out the favourite in his backyard. What a performance. Well, yeah, you know, um, he was a big favourite here. I mean, all the crowd was obviously with him. But um, at this weight, you know, my punching power, ain't no one going to stand with me. Was that the plan, to come out and try and catch him cold, or did you just see the opportunity and take uh, it? The opportunity was there, I took it. 
Um, I was expecting to go 10 rounds, to be honest. I didn't think it would fold that easy. But like I say, when I hit with a right end, they're going to go. You're making a habit of doing this to Scottish boxers. You did the same to John Wilson earlier this year. I know, I'm not sure if they're going to ask me back again. I don't think so, Sam. Mm. But listen, more importantly, from your point of view, you've opened up an avenue to maybe a lot of money. Dean Francis and, of course, Reed and Calzaghe as well. That's it, bring them on, you know. Whoever I'll fight any of them. Well, let's bring in Chris Senegar. Chris, you must have been absolutely delighted. Could you believe what you were seeing? Oh, definitely. Um, I've got every faith in Sven's ability. You know, that's why we took, uh, you know, our second fight away from home up here in Scotland. I mean, you know, you've got to knock him out to draw, but, uh, you know, Sven done the business. In fact, Sven caught him with a couple of right-handers early on, and, and he just wobbled one, one minute. I thought, I wonder if he wobbled, and he wobbled for a, a split second. Second time I'd definitely seen him wobble, and then, you know, then uh, Sven just powered it on. Well, is it too early to talk about uh, Francis in, in the next fight, do you think? Well, Dean Francis um, is the sparring partners. They're, they're both trained, you know, by, by uh, Dean Francis's father. So there's no, no way in this world that Dean Francis and Sven are going to box. What will happen, please God, um, Dean will go on and win a European title, maybe challenge for, the, for a world title, and then that will give, give Sven the opportunity to follow on with a British title and then a, a European. But naturally, with Frank Warren having Robin Reed and Kel Zaki, um, the opportunity could come a lot quicker because they might fancy Sven instead of Dean Francis. But with that punching power, I don't think anyone's going to be looking for Sven Hamer. Well, a last word from you, Sven. It, it seems that the tougher the task, the more you rise to it. Yeah, I mean, I like being an underdog. You know, last time when I came up and um, Fort Wilson, you know, it didn't, it, didn't, it didn't bother me that the crowd was all with him. At the end of the day, you know, when, when, when that bell goes, just me and the opponent, you know, he's got to beat me. Not, you know, the crowd don't matter. Well, sensational performance, sensational upset. Well done, the two.